If you want to know everything there is to know about the Jackson Cusa FD Flex Drive, then this video is for you. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, we cover kayak modifications, spin, and fly fishing. So poke that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. I had a long video comparing the native Slayer 13 to the Jackson Cusa FD. This video pulls out the Jackson part of that so you can see a shorter clip that focuses only on the Cusa. And the guys here at Hook, Line and Paddle were great in supporting me on doing that walkthrough. If you live within a thousand miles of Wilmington, North Carolina, then this is the place to buy your kayak. If you buy it here and you buy your accessories here, they'll install them all for free. Now, let's do the walkthrough on the Cusa. I'm here with Chris, the kayak whisperer, and his kayak sniffing dog, Finn, and we're here to try and figure out what the best kayak is for me. Okay, so the Jackson Cusa FD is 12 feet and comes in at 115 pounds with the flex drive installed. Remove the flex drive, the boat comes in at 102. With the FD, your bow hatch, also includes your paddle part, which we'll show you in a little bit. All you have to do is pull your two flaps back. You have ample storage inside. Um, being sit on tops are completely hollow, so you can really pack them full of gear. Um, as we move back down the boat, <clears throat> your drive system is held into position by these two T-bolts. So once you loosen them, slide them out of the way. Drive's removed. Install your drive. T-bolts back on. A couple twists to secure it, and you're all set. No tools or mechanical ability needed all, all to hand, deal with that. All hands free. All, all, all brain free. All Steve prepared. <laughs> all right. Um, coming back through, so both bolts are designed, designed to stand up in. So you have um, seat deck down for comfort. Uh, with the track systems, again, you can add your cup holder, your rod holder. You can, you can switch them back and forth. You can put different, different accessories up while you're there. Now, one of the key features with the FD compared to the Slayer, um, they put this system in. So if you're in shallow draft, props all the way up so you don't have to take, lift the propel system up like you do in the native. They also did this if you're bass fishing. If you run across some weeds, you're able to, to clear your prop. When you want to use it, their shallow, dra their shallow propel draft is one D10 up which will put you in about six inches of water. All the way down, it's all the way up. Now you need to run in about 12 to 13 inches of water. The nice thing about the system with these detents are, if you do happen to not see an obstacle coming, when you hit it, it will kick it up into whatever position it needs to be in. If you get really shallow, it'll kick it all the way up into the up position. The seat, breathable material, adjustable backrest, and because you're pedaling, you have to think about your bike seat going up and down. What they did with this seat is they, again, added some T-bolts with hand screws so you can loosen it and slide it forward or backwards, depending on your leg length, so you're comfortable while you're pedaling. Another thing, and, and that's easy enough to lift from low for, to high seat? Yeah, for your low to high position, you just pull these pins, the seat pops up, pop the pin back in. So real simple. And that's going to also, when you adjust it for your leg length, there won't be much difference. You won't have to readjust if you go from the low position to the high position. It'll be, you should be where you need to be. Um, is, is there a limitation on how big you can be to sit in here? This will fit me, I guess. Okay. No, and I mean, we, I've seen guys use this 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, uh, I'm six foot. We're about the same height. Um, down to people, you know, five and a half feet tall. It's just the fact that the seat has so much maneuverability in the cockpit of the kayak. You can basically get anybody can really fit in this. Um, native, you know, welds their aluminum instead of having it bent. Um, and uh, these guys bend it over here. It's bent. It's one solid bent tube. Okay. Um, you're getting the same thing. You know, native just has it welded and powder coated. Um, That's right. This is just uh, bare. bare what is this? Aluminum. Aluminum. It's all. And in all these kayaks, you know, any any kayak from a store like what we do, like is a, is especially paddle shop. It's all going to be aluminum and stainless steel. This, this boat could end up in Wisconsin. 
that book could have ended up in Idaho. They both ended up here on the East Coast, and they're going to be using salt water. So, um, so which seat is more comfortable for someone with hemorrhoids? Uh, minor hemorrhoids, I would say native, major, uh, the, the CUDA. And, but you know what? If you have one of those fancy little rings, you could probably sit in any one of them. <laughs> Sounds good to me. They have a slide-out tackle storage tray. So pat it out for your small loose stuff if you're changing back and forth between lures. Also enough to keep a small plano back here under the bungee. Keep it secure so it's not rattling around. Um, actually, you can get two under here. They can give you one with the boat, but if you slide it back, it'll fit us up. Okay. Um, what they've done, which is interesting with their rudder controls, is they've put one on each side and have labeled them left and right. So if you want to turn to the left, it goes forward. If you want to turn to the right, it goes, you pull it to the stern. Now, depending on what you have going on in your hand, if you've got a fish, if you're fighting it, if you have one hand busy, you can just come to the other side of the kayak and also control your steerage uh, either way. Again, it's still the same left and right. Um, if you want to lock it down to go straight, there's little detents they flip into. Now the rudder's straight, so if you have to paddle, uh, you don't feel like you're fading off to the left or fading off to the right, that rudder's gonna help you track straight. So you're assuming that I'm actually gonna catch a fish and have to I'm, worry about this. I'm hoping the years of tutelage I've given you, you should be able to catch a fish in this boat. All right, <laughs> boat fishing. Um, so again, we talked about the breathable seat on an aluminum frame. What they also add on is a sea line dry bag on the back for some storage. If you want your cell phone, um, anything like that, GPS electronics. You have a nice dry bag that mounts to the mounts to the uh, mounts to the kayak. Again, you know, see so a Gerard holding in the front. Jackson also does come ready to go with two recessed tubes in the back. Rod That's holders. Let's talk about those a little bit. Yeah. So it it comes with it comes with ram. Scotty. Comes with a ram. Oh, ram. Okay. Ram. Um, this is the 2007 series. Uh, 2008 is a little bit more taller. And then they have the rocket launcher tube if you want to do some trolling. Um, it's on a ball, just like a lot of RAM system. It's very similar. So you can angle your rod holder where you need it and then tighten it back down again. Um, you have a lock on it. So when the rod's in there, if you're going to be moving or if it gets a little choppy, you want to make sure the rod's secure. You bring that lock up over the top. What are these holes for up here in the front? So these holes, so these are for horizontal rod storage. Um, if you're doing some bass fishing or if you just kind of around some heavy cover on a river, uh, instead of having your rod straight up in the air getting caught in all the low hanging branches, you can actually lay them vertically and put the rod tips in each tube. And then further back, right here, you have a way to actually secure uh, right around either your reel or your fighting butt, depending on the length of your rod and how far you put it in the tube. Um, so if, if uh, I wanted to use those to put my lightsaber in to protect myself against alligators, it would work for that as well. The lightsaber has to be off to melt the kayak. Uh, lightsaber has to be off. off. Okay. Must be off. Okay. Another thing I just realized. Um, I, so I've got moving back here off. again, you have your. This comes with recessed rod and, tubes. Uh, it also comes oh, with a way to mount RAM the, surface base that, rod that, holders. Exactly um, these are all uh, brass nut molded in. Line. These little black screws are made of nylon, just to protect the threads. So you'll be able to set that ram base on top and put your stainless steel screws in. Um, yeah. That means you're just not trying to put a screw in and hopefully it grips the plastic. It's actually ready to take those accessories. Wow. Um, if you want to do a few more track mounted options, like more Scotty, or I'm sorry, more ram behind you, um, you have this whole track system back here. You can just slide your T-bolts into with whatever you have, whether you want to have, if you want to be troll, if you want to troll four rods, you can have two come out the back and do two ram twos up ram tubes out the side for storage in the tank well and Steve I have fished with you before and you do bring almost all of Bass Pro Shop yeah so how much of Bass Pro Shop can fit into this hole right here probably 67.3 percent I don't know if that's going to be enough for me but um it's done with bungee so if you put in a box or, or tackle bag it's secured if you need to you can unhook it if you have if you have, if you have a larger container to put in there also, it's adjustable. Again, all tool free with these wing nuts. Just loosen it, slide this where it needs to be, and retighten it back down. So you do have quite a bit of options back here. Or if you did a small cooler and it's kind of tall, you'd be able to come up over the top of it. 
to secure something down. So milk cradle fit in there? Milk just cradle fit back in here. Um, another cool product that'll fit back here. Um, it's a product from Yak Attack called the Black Pack. Um, this will buy you three more rod holders. Three more rod holders and the tackle storage system. So this empty container, you can, the smart, the great thing about the, back, the Black Pack from Yak Attack is you can put the rod holders where they need to be because everything's pre-drilled. You can add Yak Attack accessories to it because everything's pre-drilled. And the inside is an open cave that you can outfit any way you want to. All right, that sounds like a good option. I, I might have to, to move up from the, the Harbor Freight toolbox I'm using right now. To the, to the black pack. Uh, again, so then through the back of the stern, you also have more storage. The storage unit back here in the stern kind of plays two roles. Of course, you have access to the inside of the hull for more storage. Another thing they wanted to do, that if you were going to take this kayak out and do some river fishing, you know, if you're going to be in the mountains of North Carolina, uh, you know, Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee, you can pull this pin, the rudder comes off, you leave the drive system at home, and now you have a 12 foot kayak you can paddle down a moving river. So things you'd be concerned about is shallow areas with river rocks, you know, um, might have class one or class two sections of white water you're going through. You wouldn't want the rudder on and you wouldn't want the drive on. So it's, again, it's super easy to, to take all that stuff apart. Even though the drive will pop up if it hits something. Right. Better to I, leave mean, it off. I, I think the answer to that question would be you fish that river and you know whether it's feasible to bring that drive system along or not. If you're going to be going up and down constantly because of the shallow areas, personally, I'd probably leave it at home. If there are going to be long stretches you could pedal and short stretches you'd want it up, then I'd probably bring it with me. That's going to really dictate what what water body you're on and how you want to how you want to set that up what's this for back in here one carry handle two micro power pole so oh, this okay. is this is tapped out again with the nylon screws just to protect the threading so don't get ruined you take all these screws out you put your micro power pole base on run the hardware back into it and now you have a battery powered uh, stakeout anchor so Chris, one of the things that, that I know I'm going to need in the shallow water is the ability to paddle. How does this thing move with a paddle and is there an easy way to keep this out of the way when I'm pedaling? There is. So both the Jackson Cusa and the native Slayer 13 paddle extremely well. Um, and when you're in shallow water conditions, if you want to stand up and pull around a sight cast, you're going to need a way to get around other than your, than your foot drive or your propel system. So with, Jack, with the FD, you have the option of pulling on the side with a bungee, or if you're up, stand up paddling it, searching for fish, instead of having to bend back down and hook it on there, on the front it has the paddle part, all you have to do is slide that front paddle blade in and keep it off to the side. It's out of the way of standing. And if you see a fish, like a tailing red, all you gotta do is slide that paddle in cast instead of trying to ah. squat down and fumble and try to get it back okay up. okay and while we're speaking about paddles these propel boats both of them the, the kusa and the slayer they're a little wider for standing and so paddle length has to do all with with height but nowadays with the boats getting wider it also has to do with the width of the boat trying to find that sweet spot sometimes it's not easy what accent did with a few of their lines this is their trophy angler um, it comes as a 240 and extends all the way out to a 260 centimeter paddle in five centimeter increments. So you can go oh, and it feet. just snaps in. It right just snaps in. right in. So you can get out there, you can adjust, fiddle, fiddle with it, and until you're on, on the water, you can just move, move it around. around. Okay. Yep. So that's kind of a nice thing. Now that really bodes well also with the FD having a high low seat position. When you're lower to the water, your paddle needs to be a little shorter because you're closer. When you move that seat up, you're further away, and that paddle became too short. So instead of having to carry two different paddles with the high position, the low position, the, the I'm pulling, I'm not pulling, I'm just paddling, one shot deal out the door, um, a slider paddle. So what does the cat think in terms of how fast these things will go? I, I read that this has a 1 to 12 gear ratio. And, and the Slayer has a 1 to 10. A 1 to 10. So. You know, I think she's more concerned about what seat's free to sleep in during the day than their actual speed. Okay. It kind of gets to be splitting hairs. 
you know, I haven't had them both on the water together, but if you look at the mechanics of it, this should be a little faster, a little faster, because it's a foot longer. I think it's, it wouldn't be much faster because we have a 12 to 1 gear ratio between a 10 to 1 gear ratio. Um, they all have a terminal hull speed because they displace water. So if you and I each hopped in one and just pedal as hard as we could, I think the slayer is going to pull ahead just a little bit. It might eke out maybe 10 or, 10 or so feet in front of you. But once that max hull speed's taken, there's no way I can pull away from you. There's no way you can catch up to me. Chris, I really appreciate the walkthrough on both no of problem. these boats. Now we get down to brass tacks. What are these things going to cost? You know, I only make tens of dollars on my YouTube channel. Can I afford these boats? If you keep putting up videos, yes. So, the Cusa FD comes in at $29.95. My <laughs> oh, God. My God. Now, <laughs> make it better for me, please. Now, the Slayer 13 does come in at $24.95. And the main difference is, is that Jackson, like from the factory, gives you more things on the kayak, where you have the rod holder, the insulated mug, the cup holder for it, the sliding tackle storage, the bag on the back. So they're a little bit more assembled when they come to us. How much would all that cost if I had to buy it separately? You know, it's, it starts adding up. I mean, the cups alone are, are $35, a cup holder. Um, we sell as an accessory because, again, with this T-bolt system on the bottom, it fit any track system. Um, they're $20. Um, this is about $35. Um, looking at the bag on the backs, close to $60. I'm not quite sure because this isn't really an aftermarket piece you can buy. That's obviously even they had a mold it and create a mold for it, design it, and make it. Um, you know, putting the rod tubes in the front, extra cost. So there's a little bit of added value. But what about the cat? Does the cat come with it? Well, cat, if you can get, like I said, if you get a cat and go fishing with you, that cat shouldn't cost you anything. Okay, free cat. Okay. Free cat. Um, you know, they do stuff, you know, where they'll give you GoPro mounts. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that So before. if you want to record okay. yourself out there fishing, you have a GoPro mount. That's important um, to me. Yep. So they've teamed up with a few different companies and, and added their accessories onto it. Um, so it's kind of almost a one-shot deal. I'm um, just, okay, we'll just trick it the way I want. Let's just go. Okay, um, okay guys, you've heard, this, this is a long video, but it's really informative. So which of these two do you think I should get? Help! What's your experience? Do you have an FD? Do you have a Slayer? Which would you check, pick again? And just give me that advice. Thanks.